Hi, my name is Samson Dowd. I'm an IFBB Pro Bodybuilder. I'm here with my partner and coach, Malena. And uh, today I just want to tell you a bit about myself and tell you about my history and what the road has been for us to get to this point that we are right now. I was born in Nigeria and I moved to the UK when I was a teenager. With my life is, I've always been into sports. It first started off for me, you know, I played football out in the street. As the older we got, we also started playing basketball. And then when I go through my teenage years and go into my 20s, I got introduced to playing rugby for my ro local rugby club. And it was always a sport that I just felt really passionate about. And I loved the whole excitement and everything about the sport. Because I wanted to be really successful with that, I started going to the gym. And from that point on, it just sort of graduated and where I met my partner over in the gym. It just kind of graduated from that point on and before you know, you know, it was something else. And you got to the point of us starting off actually playing and um, thinking about being on stage and doing a bodybuilding show. So on an average day, basically, I work a full-time job in construction. So my average day is wake up about seven o'clock in the morning and I have my breakfast, get ready, I head off to work, get to work about eight o'clock. And from that point on, I'm at work for eight hours straight, you know, trying to fit my meals in in between those times and then head, get back home for 4.30 in the afternoon. And at that point on, we, you know, I like to have a little bit of rest, you know, just kind of let my head down for a bit and then have a few more, have a meal or two when I'm at home and then get ready and start hitting the gym for late in the evening. And um, that's one of the things, that idea of actually resting up to then go to the gym without much more energy to then go as hard after a long day at work. We've normally finished the gym quite late. We normally finish about half 10 or 10 o'clock in the evening. We get home, I have my dinner and off to sleep to start the next day, same, same thing again. And we do that five days a week. For me, you know, it all started in 2014 when I truly actually decided, okay, you know what, this is a sport I wanted to do. Even though I was being convinced by a lot of people at the time to keep bodybuilding a go because they saw, saw my potential and saw what I could do, it was my partner that finally came in to me and actually gave me that go ahead to actually truly feel like it was something I could do. So when we met up, it was just a simple fact of we both trained in the same gym. We both just kind of started training with each other from that point on, you know, now say hello, and just kind of went from that point on. And when she talked me into the whole idea of it, it was, for me, it was just a big no-no because bodybuilding, I never saw anything out of bodybuilding that would ever be something I would be doing. You know, it just felt like a big blasé sport I didn't know anything about. So we kind of decided, oh, yeah, we really did want to go to it. So we started training towards that. And our first show was basically, I think it was, um, April, April 2014, Hercules Olympia. And we just kind of, kind of just went out of half ass really because we didn't really know much about the sport. All we did was we had to do all our research ourselves. We had to go through everything ourselves and, you know, learn the poses, learn the whole idea of what the sport is. I mean, the, the, the whole idea of how, you know, you have to be in stage conditioning. Everything was brought to us. Basically, we had to learn all that ourselves coming through the sport. and. Even though we kind of had help from friends at the time, majority of the work we had to do. So going from that point is we were trying to get ready for my first show. We spent, I think it took us about two months first to kind of get down into condition. And it was basically just up in a trainer. I remember the first time I did my prep, I didn't even do any cardio. It was just basically we stepped, we really went from obviously being just a simple gym going person to actually saying, okay, train fully as a competitive athlete. So for me, it just kind of was the kind of the drive and the target I needed to kind of put my foot down and actually really go for it. So we went through everything else, did our first show, Hercules over 2014. Uh, we did the first timers class, which we won that early that morning. And then we got asked to then come in with the heavyweights at the end of the night. And we kind of, you know, got into that one and we won that as well. And that was basically it for me. From that point on, I was just completely in love with the whole sport. You know, I actually saw what putting in hard work can actually bring, where 
before when I was playing all the team sport, it was always that idea that you could be the best player on the field, but if your team lose, we all lose. And then I came to a sport where it was basically a little bit more selfish and it's all about yourself and your effort. And whatever you put in is what you reap out at the end of it, you know. So for me, it was a whole different idea and a whole different dimension, something I really enjoyed because I knew I was hard work. I knew I was strong driven. I knew what I was capable of achieving. And I just felt like, okay, this was definitely sport for me from that point. I and mean, it was something that I really wanted to strive at. So we kind of went from there, went from show to show throughout the 2014 year and 2015, winning as many shows as we could. We had Hercules Olympia, the Mr. Hampshire, um, went on to the Wabba World Championship, placing seconds over there. And then the following year, 2015, we finally decided, okay, we're going to do a serious shows. And we did the London Southeast, we did the Body Power Expo, and we qualified for the British Championships. And my first British Championship, basically, you know, going up against guys that I've seen in magazines and seen online and, you know, guys that we kind of sort of looked at like the next level. It was basically the first time we're going up against them. And it was a bit kind of daunting at the time, but when we did our first British Championship and placed in third and our first ever British, that was such a big deal at the time. I mean, I didn't see it at the time that, I didn't see it like that at the time because it just felt like, yeah, I wanted to win the show, but <laughs> coming in as your first British as an underdog and then placing third, I suppose it was a good thing to work home with, but and that's what sort of what it was. So we kind of felt proud about what our accomplishment was at the time. So from that point on, we actually thought, you know, we actually do have a future in this sport. It wasn't just a hobby anymore. It was something where you could be professional. You could take it all the way in, you know? So we thought, okay, it's time for us to actually truly step it up and take it seriously and actually go all the way and see how far we can push it. So when 2015 year came in, it was the idea of we wanted to win the British. We wanted to make that our main show of focus in that year, that 2016. Yeah, it was going to be our main show that year is to win the British Championships. And it was one thing that we really wanted to focus on. So we took the whole year off and just concentrate on just that one show. And when we went through the whole prep and the whole process of off season and everything else, and we came with that show and it was, and placed fourth in that show, which was kind of like a, it was a big hit. And it was one of the first hit I ever received from the sport that really did hurt. Because it was like, we're coming to a show where we placed third the previous year to come back the following year. And then we knocked back down one more place in. And it wasn't, you know, that was the first time I sort of got that feeling of, okay, no matter how hard you work, you have to kind of push even further than what you've already done so far. So going in fast forward into 2017, it was the idea of, okay, we have to do as many shows as it takes us to kind of win our pro card. So we went straight in, we did, first we did the Arnold Classic in Barcelona. We came fifth in a big lineup of 20 something guys, all, all top guys from different countries. And then we went off and then we did um, the British Championships planning on winning that and placing just second in that show. So for me, it was like, okay, right, last straw. We, the week after that, we basically flew out to Italy to do the Diamond Cup Italy. You know, one last chance to win everything to finally get this, what we've been working on for so long. So we flew out to Italy the following weekend, competed at the Diamond Cup Italy. And then we won that, won, the, won our class and then took home the overall. So for us, that was basically, that was a moment, you know, where we finally won everything and we got our pro card. And it was seriously one of the overwhelming moments of our, of our career and one of the biggest wins we've had to that point. Throughout the first few years of doing the show and getting through the amateur ranks, it was just me and Mel and my good friend, Chris Jones. And amongst all of us, he was the one I knew the most about bodybuilding because he was doing it way before we even kind of knew anything about it. So when we were looking for advice and everything, we went to him and he was kind of been my guardian. He's kind of guided me through the whole sport and everything else and guided me through the whole idea of training and nutrition to the point at that time to kind of get us through where we were. So when we then won our pro card and we were trying to step things up to the next level and do, do our first pro show, we basically did it for the first time, went off to do it by ourselves. So, you know, through the whole off season, that period of 2018, trying to work for our first pro show, which was going to be EVLS Prague. It was just a process of, okay, how much can we improve from looking like an amateur physique to actually looking like a pro one? 
So coming into the 2018 year, we know we really had to dig deep and you know what we were working on was just trying to bring my physique to the next level. So we're stepping into our first pro show and we knew how you know good you have to be to be a pro in the IBB. And for us, it was time for us to kind of really step things up. So we started working together just by ourselves and trying to kind of bring our best package to the 2018 stage, which our first show was EVLS in Prague, which was sort of like towards the ending of the year. And because it was literally the first show after the Olympia, we knew we were going up against the guys that were just, you know, coming off the Olympia stage and we were going up against the best. So it gave us a good gauge of what we needed to work on. So what we basically kind of pushed through was... Yeah, everything really. The, the training was more and more intense. Everything was on point. We didn't even miss one training session. Food, the dieting, we took it to another level. Um, and the whole drive, his whole drive through the whole, um, probably four months before the show, it was that um, he had to beat Ronnie Winkler. That was, that, was, that was the goal, that he had to beat Ronnie Winkler. You know, for me, <laughs> because you know the way it is always worked for me. Basically, you know, when going into shows and looking at a lineup, I think about it like this: Who's the who's going to be the toughest guy in the lineup? Who's most likely to win the show? Who's the best guy coming up Olympia stage that's actually in that lineup that is going to be a challenge? And then I focus all my energy and training in the idea of okay, I got to beat the best guy, you know. And it's always been one of way of kind of keeping me focused, keeping me driven. Is the idea of I always pick out my target and be like, okay, right, I'm working throughout my training, I'm working towards. It's not easy, taking but, this but he always asks me towards the end for confirmation. Do you think I can actually beat Ronnie Winkler? Bear in mind, this is a, this, his first professional pro show <laughs> as a pro, <laughs> and then he's he's trying, he's telling, asking me. Do you think I can beat him? Obviously, I can't say no. <laughs> for the show, but. Well, at the same time, I think at the same time, what it is is because it's almost like the idea of okay, you reach for the stars, but even though you fail, you know you land. Or reach for the reach for the moon, even though you fail, you know you land among the stars. But so for me, if I reach for the best guy and I train my heart off and my ass off and do everything just to go after the best guy, even if I don't manage to beat him. I would have lift my level up a lot higher than where it would have been if I just kind of just That's true. just kind of just take it easy and go, okay, you know what, I just want to do my best. Yeah. So for me, this has always been an idea of having a target when I come into shows was because when I know what the best is and I'm trying to aim for that, even though if I don't get that at the end, I will end up being a lot higher than what I was. So the 2018 Prague show. It was really good. Mm -hmm. The outcome was good. Good plays. So that was high. Yeah. First pro show placing fifth in Prague, just after Roly, Nathan, uh, Lucas Osdell, and um, the guy from Czech. And a guy from Czech, uh, can't remember his name now. Mm -hmm. But that was basically our first show, first pro show, you know. And I was excited, you know, it just came off stage and just came fifth in the in a show like that. I got my first check in the bodybuilding. I was, I was I was over the moon, man. It was like, wow, this is it, you know. And then we had another show lined up in Italy, which was about four weeks later or six weeks later? Six weeks. It was about six weeks later. So it was basically, we had to hold that conditioning and try to improve on it in the space of six weeks. But, you know, after already coming off a what, 13 weeks diet and carry on going for that process for another six weeks. So that for me was basically the biggest, I think so far the biggest challenge I've ever gone through in a prep was trying to hold that conditioning for basically almost half the period of a prep kind of going to the next show but I was determined to go into that show because I knew that there was no big name people in that show there was a lot of numbers and a lot of guys coming to the show but it's like 22 guys yeah there were 22 guys in the class which was quite a lot but none of them were you know one of the elite guys that were at the Olympia level sort of competitor so for me it was okay that was a show I felt like I could win you know so we were training the whole time with that intent on okay you're going into me you're going into win so when it came around that we were doing, going to Italy to do the show, which was in Padova, Italy, just off Venice. And the show came through and yeah, and yeah, we could end up placing eighth place, which, you know, for me, that was completely crushing. You know, it probably wouldn't have been as bad if we didn't have such a high expectation coming off the Prague show, but because we did, it just, it felt like really 
really defeating. It felt really bad. It felt really hard to take down. And we knew we brought a lot better package and we could, we did it prior. We knew how much better we were there. We were prior to that. So it was just, it was just kind of hard to swallow down. You were devastated. Completely devastated. It took, I, I think Romania was two weeks after. Was it two yeah. weeks after? Mm -hmm. I think it was two or three weeks after. But I know it took a whole week of trying to actually sort of bring you back to be in the mood of getting on the stage again in Romania. Mm. It, was, it was hard. It was really hard. Yeah, so when two weeks after that we sort of had a show in Romania and it was a Wings of Strength show. And it was basically one of them shows where you're kind of coming in because you know the lineup was pretty much the same as the prior show to that, which was in Italy. So you were going up against the same guys again, more or less. And it felt like, okay, I've already brought my best to Italy and that didn't even work out. So going to Romania for me was like, well, you know what, if we're ever going to experiment with something, this is it. So we intentionally came in as full as we can and not focus too much on conditioning in that show. And what we, you. <laughs> not focus too much on conditioning in that show. And we came in obviously big and full and everything else. And we placed eleventh place, which was like, okay, you know what, this is it just felt like it just get worse and worse. So for me that that twenty eighteen ending signing twenty eighteen years so old in the high up and then ending it like that in such a low level it just it was crushing it was it's, it made me start to question if i really wanted to do this sport you know it made me start to question if i actually have what it takes to really you know succeed in this you know not just kind of you know just be one of the low in, the numbers that just turn up for shows but to really do well would it be actually something that i could achieve so yeah 2018 year didn't end well no no it didn't it was mainly, it took, I think after 2018, it took at least two months to convince him to compete again. He didn't want to do it. Um, mainly because of the finances, really, because he just, he just drained us so badly competing. But, you know, we managed to persuade him to step on the stage again, and he did it. So, so coming into 2019, you know, a whole new year, mm -hmm. a whole new concept. And for us, it was more or less like, okay, we just got to get back on stage and get out there. I mean, my mental state was, okay, I got to find out why I love this sport in the first place. What do I truly enjoy about the sport? Is it just the idea of winning, losing, being in this place or that place? Or was the idea of the journey of it, the training, the being on stage, the diet, the experience, the, the actually seeing the improvement happen week after week. That for me was finally became my focus, was the idea of love the training, enjoy the sport for what it is. And so don't be so consumed by the idea of, oh, I gotta place this high, or I gotta be here, and I gotta be here. Just try to hold back on that and actually just let that show whatever, and let the chips lie where it lies, but until then, so find your passion for the sport again. So that 2018 year, I mean, 2018, yeah, they decided, they basically said that they were going to bring back the British Grand Prix, which was the, in 2019, which was going to be in, in, by the end of June, June 30th. So we knew that, okay, we had a few months of off season left that we could use and then straight into a prep. So for me, it was basically, okay, I'm going to get back to work and I'm going to bring my absolute best and bring a much more improved package to the new year. And you did. <laughs> Worked your ass off massively in the gym, took the training in the gym to completely new level, like never before. Um, food went even more up and it worked. For me, it was basically okay, I gotta find a way of putting down a lot more food than what I'm used to. So, we started increasing. You know, we increased everything. We increased our protein, we increased our carbs. What we did, we worked with a coach for a bit, just for the off season, didn't we? Yeah. And he sort of like got you to eat more food in a, in a good way. There was a very, very high protein, extremely high protein. Still clean food, but very high protein, shakes post meals, and it did work because you, you managed to get all your meals in. 
So yeah, we're having, I mean, it was crazy because we were doing things like, okay, we have a meal 20 minutes after that, we have a shake. Have a meal 20 minutes after that, have a shake. I mean, even my post-workout shake had like a tub of yogurt in it, you know. And I was waking up in the middle of the night to have another shake just to make sure we get out of as much calories as we can muster and how much calories my body can actually tolerate, which it, so it actually worked and it worked quite well actually because the more I could push food in and push the training and push all that whole hard work and bring it all together, the more we improved and more we saw the improvements that was happening in the off season because I've never got that big. I and mean, there's a point where I was getting over 300 pounds and I've never been that big before. And it was kind of like, okay, we can see the, you know, and we can see the muscle growing. We can see the size I am there, but it was basically a concept of how much of it is actually muscle, new muscle tissue that we can actually use when it comes down to actually dieting. So, you know, for us, it was like, okay, we did the whole off season thing. It worked out great. And it came down by March time to start dieting for the show. And we basically just got on it. Massive focus in the prep, wasn't it? Huge. And then you, your focus changed to Nathan Diasha. <laughs> so, so it was all about Nathan Diasha for that show. <laughs> so basically, you know, as I said, I always got to pick a target when I go to the show. So as soon as we found out that Nathan was doing the British Grand Prix, guess what? That was the next guy's a guy I got to take out, you know. Okay, I got to be, we're going to be the best in the UK. Well, he does when he picks a target, he analyzes their physics. So you'll be watching shows, you'll be looking at their pictures. You, you will know their strengths, you will know their weaknesses, so you analyze against yourself and say, yes, he's strong from this pose, but I think I can take him on that. So it's just it's obsession, it becomes obsession, basically. Well, it tends to kind of work out in that way because I obviously look at them physiques and I try to pick out my strengths over theirs and what poses I can hit better and how their personality is on stage and how I can you know, fight against that and how can stand and shine up over that. So we, I watch and I study my opponents, especially when in those kind of tight circumstances, to study them as much as I can to bring my best to the stage and make sure that I have enough to stand next to them and not be overshadowed and not be over, not be pushed out from that concept. So for me, it was, okay, we're coming to the British Grand Prix. Nathan was the guy to beat. So I basically spent all my time focusing on, okay, what I got to do to beat him. So when we start going through the prep for 2019, it was basically an idea of, okay, we know we got a lot of size and we really wanted to hold on to that new size we just put on. But at the same time, we couldn't jeopardize the idea of size for conditioning. So we really tried to dial it down as much as we could coming in th into the show. You know, we stepped up on the prep, you know, get the cardios in, you know, really kind of really pull things around. And how you <laughs> You played so, second to Nathan. So, coming to the British year, we then, that year we then played second to Nathan De Asha, which was a freaking, you know, it was a massive result for me. You know, it was the first time obviously placing that high in the pro show as well. So that was really a cool result. And then the following week, we obviously had another show lined up in Chicago. So, went to Chicago Pro and obviously the most record, record amount of athletes to turn up for one show on Body Pro with 27 bodybuilders on one stage. I mean, 27 high level pro bodybuilders on one stage. So for me, that was like, okay, right. This is a big boy show right here. So go on, just go on to Chicago and yep, end up placing seven to Chicago pro, which was still, I mean, I wasn't a hundred percent happy with it, but- You were quite disappointed. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and disappointed with it. But at the same time, you know, obviously given the aspect of what the show is and being the first time of me competing in the States, which it was, you know, you never could, you never could complain about a place like that. He was like, okay, you know what, take it on the chin, this is what it is. So we played seven there and then the weekend after that, we flew over to Vancouver, Canada to compete in the Vancouver Pro. And we end up placing eighth place over Vancouver Pro. And that was you know, another exciting show. First show, first time ever in Canada, first time ever doing a show over there. So it was actually quite, you know, really enjoyed that. Same time, it doesn't feel like I wasn't really, you know. Because it felt like the place, it, the was, place it was, was almost like competing the year before, yeah, that they were it sleeping. You know, it felt like you start the year placing quite high and then the more the year goes on, your placing drops and drops and drops and then before you know it, 
is somewhere out there in the numbers. So he didn't feel good and he felt like the year was he's just about to repeat himself again. So we basically had one more show left, which was in Portugal the following weekend. And we went off to Portugal to actually do that show there. And yeah, uh, we came in, I believe was our best look yet. You know, tied us, you know, fuller, you know, everything that I could bring at that point, I felt like we brought to the stage then. And yeah, we climbed over a few places and we ended up placing fifth at Portugal. And, you know, for me, I felt like that was like a real, you know, it was, it felt good to me, you know, it didn't feel as good as obviously going higher, but for me, it felt good at the time because it felt like, okay, we broke that mold and idea of, yeah. you know, we were dropping place in the place and were we getting worse or what was going on? But then being able to then come back in that and then place higher. The it, man, every single show had me move 20 guys. Yeah, yeah, you know. You know, them, every show, them one of them show had big numbers in it. It wasn't, it wasn't ten guys, but each show had twenty guys minimum in it. So it was a big show. So to come out to Portugal and place fifth in a big lineup, it was like, wow, okay, you know what? I was happy to call a year from that point on. I was happy to come, end it at that, and you know, walk away at the idea of that was our place in there. So it's been, it's been quite a challenging road, and you know, for us, it feels like okay, it's only been quite a short time. But it felt like a lot is happening within that time yes. that you know we we've been in it. I mean, we've only been bodybuilding for coming up to five years now, and it felt like we've kind of started off on the rock, starting off on our own, and kind of worked through the whole process of how to improve me year after year and how to sort of bring, raise the game year after year. And in less than three years, just over three years, I got my pro card. Few years later, I'm already, you know, competing and coming second in the show in less than five years. So it was for me. I feel like okay, we're on the right road, but yet we're at a point where we need to really step it up and actually take, win a show and head over to the Olympia stage. Look into the future and looking into where the competition, where we go here from here, is looking at 2020, and we're kind of hoping and kind of you know trying to work towards actually doing the Arnold Classic in Ohio or the Arnold Classic in Australia, if not both of them, and looking to compete more in the earlier part of the year than obviously more of the later part. So The plan is to get applied for the Arnold Classic. Uh, we have already applied. It's hard, to, it's very hard to get there, but we have already applied for Ohio and Australia. So that's, that's the sort of plan Obviously, if he gets the invite, that, that would be amazing. If he doesn't get the invite, then the plan is to compete early in the year, next year. So the competitive season will start probably around April. If, if he gets the, the Arnold, then it will start in March. If he doesn't, then it will be end of March, April, we'll do a few shows. And um, the, the, the aim is to get the invite for the, um, the qualification for the Olympia next year. So that's the focus for next year. Yeah. For now, we just kind of obviously, we're taking a break of, of coming off four shows this year, kind of getting our body back to a normality state. And then we know that we only go about three or four months to start really pushing, I mean, three or four months of off, off season to really push that muscle mass and actually try to make that improvement that we need. Well, for me is, I feel like next year we can bring even a more better package each time because it's what we have been doing since we started bodybuilding is the fact that we consistently improve year after year after year and it's significantly enough that you can see the changes from one year to the next so i feel like yeah we know we can do this and we've been doing this and i feel like yeah we can do it for next year as well and i believe that coming so close as we have this year if we do make that improvements and come in next year even tighter than what we were it would definitely be game on time. It would definitely be, be a clean win for us actually winning one of the shows and making it to the Olympia stage. So my goal in bodybuilding is quite a simple one, man. I want to be Mr. Olympia. I believe I have the genetic potential to do it. I believe I have the work ethic to do it. And I know there's nothing absolutely stopping me from actually achieving that. And I feel I can do it before I even turn 40, you know. And I feel like I have every potential to actually achieve that. And that's my goal and that's what's set in stone and I know I can do it. So, yeah, I ain't stopping for anything until I get to that.
when we do have down times and our down times one thing that i absolutely love doing is obviously we love the outdoors we love sceneries we love nature we love actually just the whole view and being out we love nature we love road trips, we love going out, we love scenery, I love movies, but it's just something that we just kind of really enjoy doing. So every time we have, end up having a few days, kind of like free to go, to do whatever we want, weekend. or a weekend even, we tend to just kind of just take road trips out to wherever we can and just have that whole exposure of being outdoors and actually checking out scenery and checking out new places. So Samson is quite well known for his stage presence and he's, he, normally in, in life he's a quite a shy guy, not very outspoken. When he gets to the, on the stage, when he's the moment he steps on the stage, he's like a completely different person. Two different people, it's contrasts from being this shy guy, not really talking much, to completely dominating the stage, absolutely dominating. He he he's, he's like he's he was born on the stage. He's quite well known for his posing, uh, probably one of the best poses in the world right now. So, if not the best poser in the world right now, I would say. Um, his posing things are something else. It's, it's like going back to the 90s when the guys were pulling proper posing and things. So, so basically for me, it's the way I kind of work when it comes to like, putting a routine together and putting my posing together is every morning we wake up in the morning to do my cards during the prep and I'm doing 40 minutes cardio, 30 minutes cardio, 25 minutes cardio, whatever it may be. So the whole time I'm doing that, I'm literally watching the bodybuilders from the 90s and early 2000s. You know, the Flex Wheelers, the Sean Ray, the Kevin LeBron, the Chris Comier. I'm literally up analyzing every single thing them guys did through their whole career. And I'm watching the way they, they presented themselves, not just on stage, off stage, the way they pose, the way they perform. And when it then comes down to me putting a routine together, I feel like those, that was the era where bodybuilding really shined as entertainment for someone to watch. To see an athlete actually come up on stage and perform a routine, it, it felt like wow to me. It felt like, yeah, this is what it's all about. And because now in the modern bodybuilding sector scene, nobody does that anymore. It's just, it almost feels like a dying sport, a dying part of the sport. It's like something that is not being judged. So we're just not going to put any attention to it. And for me, is I just I, it's something I love doing, so I can't see following that route. So for me, we always got to put a routine together for every show. I always got to give it. For me, it feels like it's a time for me to express myself and really, you know, come to life and show someone, you know, this is what I am. This is why I do this, and I want to be able to tell a story every time I pose through a routine and everything I do on stage without saying a single word. Someone just watch it and just can, they can relate to it and they can get pulled into it. So I'm constantly working on ways of kind of changing my style and br bringing my style up and kind of morphing things to kind of be, you know, absolutely complete when it comes to actually bodybuilding as a sector. It's not just a physical thing, but being complete as, as you know, an athlete. Although, yeah, I do, I'm a pro bodybuilder and I also work full time. We also like to help out and give back to the sport. So. You know, for me, is I feel like, okay, you know what, I know what my talents are, I know how far I've come, and I know as a pro coming up, to be able to reach out to somebody to give you that knowledge, I didn't have at that time. I didn't have coming into the sport. So I feel like I want to be more reachable for people that actually come in, coming into the sport and actually see what I'm doing and think, okay, they want that's something they were looking into doing. So we started doing online coaching. We do seminars, we do online coaching with clients, you know, and it's just a way of kind of like giving back to the sport and teaching them not just the body side of bodybuilding, but something that is already dead, like posing. So when we do the posing seminars and have the one-to-one -one session with guys that contact me and want to do it, I really, something I really enjoy doing and something I'm passionate about and I love, love the idea of actually sharing that passion. So guys, if you want to keep up my journey and follow me through the whole process of what I'm going through, you know, feel free, follow me on Instagram. Again, contact with me. You know, Instagram, Facebook. I also got my YouTube channel. So yeah, just give me a look up. So thank you guys for watching. And this is just a short brief story of my life and what we've been through so far. And looking into the 2020 year and 
what the challenges are that we're going to face coming forward. And hopefully, you know, you see me in the Olympia stage next year. So thanks for watching and see you soon.